I think the first one we're seeing is um, this idea of making big marketing easy. So marketers are really ambitious in what they want to do and, and they're, getting the, they're getting the concept of marketing across channels and with lots of different data sources. But they're getting really bogged down by just making that work. So integrating information from different sources, gathering people's preferences and that kind of stuff from different channels as well, even you know, delivery channels. So I think a lot of investment at the moment is being made in making those multiple channels work and trying to deliver a marketer's experience on a single platform. And that's certainly what we're doing. We're trying to deliver all of those channels, all of those tools, and all of that information and logic into a single platform. The idea being that we can then make you know, big multi-channel marketing easy and simple, but also at scale, so we can deliver to really you know, large organizations and large customer bases. Second trend that we're seeing a lot is this idea of before-time marketing. So and recently we've been talking a lot about real-time marketing and how we can um, interpret people's behavior in real time and try and match that against certain profiles and behavioral types. But what we're increasingly trying to do is use that insight and that data to more accurately predict what somebody wants to do next. Um, we've seen examples of you know, people trying this out already, people like Amazon and so on. But by predicting where you want to go next with better accuracy, um, you've got that ability to cut down lead times and so on. And to do this, we're going to need more and more data. And I almost refer to my previous point about making big marketing easy by grabbing data from lots of different sources. Because with more data, you can make that predictive analytics um, even better. So the th I think the third trend that I've not seen in um, events much recently is talking about engagement value. Now, uh, we see people measuring clicks at the moment and clicks and visits and so on. Um, and it, I think increasingly that's becoming very much a vanity metric. And CXO level execs know this. They're seeing that it's, it's, you know, it's not really giving you anything meaningful about what your business is doing. So this idea of adding engagement value points to those really meaningful um, points in a customer's interaction with your business means that you can start to ascribe value to what's happening on your website. So be it downloading a white paper, um, booking a test drive, or viewing a house. If you can ascribe value to these particular interactions, then you can drive that client journey, but also measure based on values that are important to your business rather than values that are set by some third party agency. Well, to be honest, I've never really heard um, too much talk around exactly the, when it comes to data and data analytics, around the profile data and contextualization data and how to use it practically. I mean, there's loads of talk on the future technologies for personalization, for example, but there's, there's little practical advice around that area. So that's the first thing I don't really hear much talk about. The second one actually is back to the uh, user experience and customer experience um, research methods. At the moment, there's quite a division between all those, the expertise in that area and all the research that happens, to not, which normally just drives improvement in customer experience. There's the application of that research to personalization is not really discussed at all. And thirdly, it's the whole subject of contextualization, which is one of the most exciting things in my view. Um, whereas personalization is based on a lot of kind of static data profile and behavior on a website, contextualization is where you're at at any one point. And I think that's one of the most exciting trends uh, to appear. And hopefully we'll hear a lot more of that in the future. Well, marketers are a chatty bunch, so most things have been discussed at conferences. But I guess three leading future trends that I, I guess is perhaps on the cusp of uh, interest at the moment. The first would be uh, something that I call collaborative marketing. As an organization, particularly in, in, in the world of digital, componentizes what they do when they split up their service proposition, their product proposition, and start to mash up that offering with other brands, other services. For example, the likes of BMW offering you the ability to figure out where to park, uh, whether you have a BMW or not. Uh, we're going to see this increasing trend in collaborative marketing. So that's where uh, one enterprise will work with another enterprise, whether that is Ocado and LG helping you to fill your fridge, or whether that is the BMW example that I just gave. Companies are going to need to start to work together to develop these kind of mashup propositions where the customer is receiving a particular segment or component of one enterprise's service proposition and it's married with another. So uh, that's the first trend is collaborative marketing. The second trend would be around the involvement of the customer in the enterprise. Um, and at IBM we call this the millennial enterprise. The idea that 
Um, any enterprise, any company actually needs to have much greater influence from their customer base to understand what they should be doing and how they should be doing it uh, in terms of their customer proposition. So we could mean customer members, you know, real customers being members of the board of a particular uh, project or program or even the entire company. We're talking about the empirical analytics collected from customer experiences really directly influencing the policy and the decisions made by customer uh, organizations about how they should interact with consumers. And in new product development and service proposition development, we're talking about customers being asked, being involved in the pre-alpha, alpha stages of a, a marketing campaign or a new service or a new product and really figuring out what customers think about something before we go full scale to market. So involving the customer in this idea of the millennial enterprise. The third trend is a little bit geeky. It's uh, something that IBM we call cognitive computing. Uh, and it's a whole a new area of computing, a new way of thinking about uh, you know, uh, technology and the way that we treat data. And our Watson supercomputer and some of the products that have spawned from it are all centered around this technology that we can take in huge amounts of unstructured data, whether that is Wikipedia, IMDB, or perhaps uh, an enterprise's customer help manuals and FAQs. And we can provide an artificial intelligence-like mechanism for a consumer to interact with that body of data without structuring it, without transforming it, in a direct and natural way, using natural language. Uh, and we're seeing this technology evolve. Even recently, we uh, did a collaboration um, with a, a number of culinary institutes to provide something called creative computing, where a computer and the algorithm is able to invent recipes based on a certain set of parameters. Now, that's an inherently creative process, something that human beings have been doing for centuries. And if we really do have a computer that is able to compete in that space, or at least assist a human to do that kind of thing, that's really an interesting trend and something that I think is going to change the way we, uh, yes, sell, you know, uh, interface with technology and also, in this case, market.